If you have try-hard colleagues at work, you might have seen them send out project recap emails with these nice, beautiful animated GIFs up top. You can actually do the exact same thing in Google Photos by going to the Utilities tab or the Library tab on the mobile app and clicking Utilities, choosing Animation here, and selecting the photos you want to animate by pressing down Shift and clicking Create. And now you can easily insert this into your Google Slides, Docs, Gmail, and be a tryhard yourself. Ready for more Google Photos productivity tips? Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. And if you're like most people, you probably don't give Google Photos much thought. It's there, it works. But trust me when I tell you, there are some practical tricks and one-off setting changes you wanna make to save you from headaches down the road. So in this video, I'm gonna share around 15 tips across four categories, storage, editing, albums, and power tips that will hopefully help you make the most out of this free and powerful tool. Starting with storage, since this is the most important feature of a Photos app, you wanna first go to this URL, I'll link it down below, to see how much storage you have left and how long Google estimates you have until you run out based on your historical usage patterns. For example, I purchased 100 gigabytes and I have six months left. Then you can review photos and videos you might wanna delete. Screenshots and blurry photos are self-explanatory, uh, but for me, large photos and videos was a game changer because I actually didn't know Google was backing up so much of my B-roll footage uh, for my videos. And as you can see, it's actually taken around 33 gigabytes out of the 54 that I'm currently using. So I know for a fact that I don't need this one, this one, this one, and these one as well. Uh, and that's already saving me like, what, 10, 12 gigabytes. I'm gonna just move those to trash. And if I go back to the main storage page, uh, you actually see that Drive and Gmail are taking up space as well. So over at Drive, if you click your storage uh, tab here, you'll see all your files listed from large to small. So you can start deleting as well. And over in Gmail, you can type in larger colon uh, 10 M in the search field here. And this returns all the emails larger than 10 megabytes, usually those with attachments. And there usually aren't that many. Um, for example, I only have 54 dating back from 2013. So you can choose which ones you want to delete there as well. Next, head over to your Google Photos settings up top here. For those of you on the free 15 uh, gigabyte plan, I recommend the storage saver option since you can't really tell the difference. And while you're here, feel free to turn off the promotional emails. If you're an Android phone user, you actually get more control over what photos get backed up. Uh, go to settings within the Google Photos app on your Android phone, backup and settings, and go to backup device folders. And I recommend turning off like movies, screenshots, or WhatsApp folders uh, if you have those. Last but not least, if you are a control freak, and you want 100% full control over your free storage, simply turn off backup and sync and literally set a calendar reminder once a month and manually upload and backup your photos. You can do this by clicking the cloud icon in the top right corner like so. And who said storage management couldn't be fun? Wait until you see how I organize my folders on my laptop. Moving on to how I manage my photo albums. As you can see, I label it from 01 to 99, depending on how often I access them. And obviously I had to make an exception for the memes folder. Elon Musk would be proud. Up at number one, I actually have a work and life folder whereby photos in this album are shared with my corporate account. This is extremely useful if you wanna share a photo you took on your personal device with your work account without having to transfer the photos back and forth and having to upload it onto your corporate Google Drive. Too much work. Another two helpful albums to always create is a reference album and an edited photos album. Uh, for reference, I just put like my gym membership card in there or QR codes I need to scan sometimes, things I need to reference, right? And it's always nice to have an edited photos uh, album so you don't have to dig through the main page to find that one nice photo to put on your um, <clears throat> dating app. Speaking of editing, Google Photos is not the most powerful editor in the world, but there are three things I always do on this app because it's just so convenient. First, pick a photo, go to the edit option up top here, and go to crop on the right. 
First, click Auto, and this just automatically straightens the photo for you, which I find to be very useful. Next, I like to use the aspect ratio selection and create a square one by one photo uh, for an Instagram post or a circle crop in Google Slides. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Uh, I click Done, and then I go to the basic correction selection here and choose the color slider, slide it all the way to the left to have a very quick and easy black and white version of this photo. After I press done, I just right click copy image and paste it into my Google uh, Slides presentation here. Uh, for corporate presentations, you might want all the headshots to be in black and white to make it a little bit more professional. And it's only possible to have a perfect circle crop if you start it out uh, with a one by one square photo. If you're an Android user, there are a lot more cool things you can do here. For example, the uh, color pop feature, which I find to be pretty, pretty cool, uh, just makes you, you know, pop out more in the photo. And also the uh, portrait light feature, where you can literally add a light source into the photo uh, itself, which I find to be pretty amazing. Moving on to power tips. First up is advanced search, since we are in Google Photos, after all. Yes, you can do the boring stuff like sky, so pretty, or selfie to see totally not embarrassing photos of yourself. Uh, but what I find to be the most accurate and useful is actually by location. For example, California, I was there a long time ago. Um, Beijing, uh, I go there every quarter for business trips. Hong Kong. Uh, haven't been back in a while. So this is very useful if you want to actually select multiple photos from a single trip and add them into one album. Staying within search, but now on your mobile app. You can search for screenshots by obviously typing in screenshots in the search bar, uh, pinch out to zoom out, long press and select multiple screenshots to share or delete in bulk. Um, pinch in to zoom in to a specific week or day, and you actually click the downward arrow here to show other pictures you took on that day. For example, on June 24th, when I hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube, I was actually uh, in Beijing for a business trip. Second power tip is if you go to the Photos tab on your mobile app, you can see the memory carousel up top. And if you click into these, you can actually click the three dots in the bottom right corner and view all photos from this day if you're feeling particularly nostalgic. And for some reason, I thought the bathroom from this Indonesia trip was worth remembering. The third tip is for iPhone users. Go to your Google Photos uh, settings and under Apple Photos, turn on Sync Favorites. This way, the next time you take a photo using your iPhone and favorite it within Apple Photos, it will automatically show up in the Favorites folder in your Google Photos. Last but not least, a little Easter egg is if you go to the search tab within your mobile app, click on your map, and this shows a heat map of all the places you visited and taken photos of. For me, it's primarily around the Asia region. Um, Dubai, Madrid, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and Mountain View. And it actually shows you at the bottom here how many photos you took uh, of each area. Let me know down in the comments which tips were your favorite or if you use a different photos app altogether. If you thought this was fun, you might enjoy this video on how to watch YouTube videos more productively. See you all next week. And in the meantime, have a great one.